right now. Do you need any water? No? Okay, okay. Hello! Everybody, this is Kelly Stamps. Wait, where's my spatula? Hello! Everybody, this is Kelly Stamps, and today I am making a requested video on the topic of finding peace as a single person living alone. I'm not really sure if this is an advice video or if this is just a stream of consciousness with my spatula. It's gonna be both! So I received an email from a subscriber who is also a YouTuber. I will keep her name anonymous if she doesn't want her life on blast. Part of the email says, <clears throat> I remember in the early days of your channel, you were in a serious relationship. We are similar in the sense that we both really appreciate our solitude and enjoy our own company. I'm just wondering if transitioning from a committed relationship to being single was hard for you ever. I'm currently going through heartbreak. My three year relationship with who I thought was my soulmate and best friend ended two days ago and I'm having a really hard time. I know it's for the best and I've accepted it, but it hurts like hell. I see how at peace you are with being alone and I believe I'll be there one day. I'm excited to feel that way again, but I just wanted to know if you have any advice. A video on your journey from being in a serious relationship to enjoying your own company again would be so helpful. I feel like a lot of your viewers would agree with me, Smiley Base. As a lot of us can say, you feel like a friend in our head and I love to see and hear your perspective on this type of transition. Let me introduce you to this word I came across on the internet when I was in one of my overthinking spells. He rife, he rife, he rife, he rife. <coughs> it's a Welsh term and it means when you are longing for home. I have my computer in front of me and I'm just reading the definition. He rife is a homesickness for a home to which you cannot return, a home which maybe never was. The nostalgia, the yearning, the grief for the lost places of your past, the Panera Bread mac and cheese on Fifth Street and Wilshire Boulevard in Santa Monica, which closed down and broke my heart. He's right. So as you know, not only am I a K-pop idol, professional chef, Beyonce's best friend, frenemy situation, Michael Fassbender's ex-wife, and then there's my doctorate. That's my plaque, I just haven't hung. Oh, by the way, I should probably mention this. I moved apartments, but not like locations. So I decided I want a separate space for my YouTube filming because my apartment was just really dark and it didn't make any sense to pay for that apartment when I only used this much of it because the light was just kind of weird. It's a different unit. I'm in a townhouse now instead of a one bedroom, which sounds crazy. We'll get to that in a second. But anyway, that's why it looks different. I'm a little bit happier and I'll talk about that in this video. Anyway, I'm a fake doctor at the Stanford University of um, Psychiatry and I'm gonna diagnose you, mystery writer. I think you are suffering from hereith like myself and many other people. Your routine got messed up, just like mine did at some point, like you mentioned. The writer mentions that I was in a serious relationship in the beginning of my channel. That is true. If you go back to the very first video ever on my channel, which actually wasn't the very first video ever, I regret deleting the other one. Anyway, you'll see my ex pop up in it, it's just a, a snippet where I'm just walking around LA with my friends. That video I will never delete. I thought I was like, Quentin Tarantino. I put out my first vlog and I thought, wow, I should enter this into Sundance Film Fest. I told everybody, yeah, I'm like a really intense YouTuber now. I had so much fun with that video just because I was just recording my everyday routine around with my friends, my best friend, hello, Isabella was in it at the time, my ex, hello, was in it. Well, he's in London. Cheerio, he left me for London. Um, so it's very weird adjusting to living alone in my own apartment. My first ever apartment to myself was in Boston, which I personally think I should have stayed in now. I'm wondering, like, should I have not moved minus everything I talked about? I basically lived in like a hotel type of setting. It was a really nice building. You step outside, there's people there to say hello to you. It makes you not feel alone. It makes me forget that, oh, I'm single. That's right, I don't have any body. I am an only child. I literally have no one, no family nearby, not close to any family. 
It can be really saddening. I'm flattered by this email, but I don't want people to think that I am always gonna be perfectly at peace with being alone, because truth is, I'm not. The reason why I moved so much is because I think I'm experiencing Peter, that term. All, everything was fine up until the breakup in 2018. It wasn't even that serious, you know? I mean, it was serious, but I mean, it wasn't like we were married, there were no kids involved, but that intensity, that commitment, that level of excitement, I have never gotten from anybody else. Normal. Yes, from homeless men on the street, they're like, sister, be my ebony princess. So basically my ex was home. I associated him with home. I associate my best friends in Los Angeles. Home was former Mr. Kelly Stamps. That's what I call my exes, by the way, or anyone who's a love interest. He was something exciting to go home to. He was the person who put an extra pep in my step. And I made his days better. He told me that his boss at Morgan Stanley said, oh, you seem different. You're, you're more excited. You seem more like you have a zest for life. And he said it's because of me. So I miss being in that partnership and that team effort mode. I am longing for that simple life that I used to have, that life when everything was just cookie cutter perfect. I think that's what my writer is possibly going through. Basically, I've been longing for that thing that isn't there anymore. Literally, LA will never be the same. Maybe it will, time will tell. The ex is gone in London and I truly, truly believe, you know, despite everything I said, clearly I miss the idea of him, but I don't miss that relationship. It was bad. I just think that exes are an ex for the reason. And I don't think we should talk to them. Unpopular opinion. Maybe if you've been with that person for years and you're their actual friend, that's different, but I just, I can't. It's like a scar. <laughs> Let me just put some Neosporin on it and move on. Ever since it ended in 2018, ever since, you know, my life just kind of changed drastically because I kind of centered my life around us together because we were literally living together. And ugh, being in New York City during the summertime and love. <laughs> no, 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 I see you, no. I see you getting nostalgic. Don't start thinking about that ex. This video is about moving forward. I have done two things to move forward and be happy with living alone. A, reinventing myself. B, also simplifying myself. Let me explain. Reinvent. Hair, always done. Nails, done. Skin, Fabulous, look at my hair. I feel my absolute best when my hair is perfectly done. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hold on, I know it's all up in the camera. You see, I'm holding it down here because you gotta just brush it into existence. I have created a routine for myself. I have created a lifestyle. I have created, <laughs> I miss him. I'm kidding, girl. No, I created a standard. And that standard is that I will always feel my absolute best. Even if my hair isn't done, that's fine. You best believe I have my Trader Joe's spicy Arabiata pasta on deck in the freezer with some Parmesan cheese and some, what's the, uh, Barolo wine, okay? Now this is what I mean by simplifying my life. I'm simplifying my life by appreciating the small things again. It is so easy when you're living alone, or even if you live with your family or roommates, whatever, and you just get caught into these overthinking moments of, I don't have enough, I don't have a man, I don't have a girlfriend, I don't have those shoes that that person has. Like, I am living such a happy, simple life in my smaller city here in Florida because I am an hour, you know, ish from Miami, and then I'm an hour from there. Just living in such a simple place where, you know, the emphasis isn't being in a relationship. You know, in Los Angeles, in New York City, it's easy to feel alone, even though it is such an overpopulated place, which is really funny. Instead of waking up thinking, oh, I miss him. I can't live alone. I can't imagine. I can't, I can't, I can't stop me, can't stop me. Whoa. I think, wow, I can go to the mall and get a soft pretzel. I can wake up and go on a run. I can get in my car and drive to the beach. I can go find a patch of grass and just lay there and not do anything. That is freedom. You must wake up and create these thoughts for yourself because if you don't, you will fall into a trap of thinking that 
you're supposed to be with somebody. Yes, I do think humans are meant to be with each other. However, I wake up thinking, I would love to find a relationship like that again. Not, I must find a relationship like that again. I was celibate for over 11 months. To some people, they think that's insane. When I tell people this, they're like, what's wrong with you? Are you a monk or something? I'm like, what? Does it make any sense? I just chose to just work on myself. And I literally worked on myself. You know, I, I, I had to do something to the magic conch, you know? When I say celibate, I mean like from men. But anyway, in those months I realized, well, it's such a blessing to just be alive, just to wake up and do whatever I wanna do. And in return, I truly think I have been attracting better people. Maybe, maybe it's Maybelline. Maybe it's my perfume. Maybe it's my positive mindset that's attracting people because they realize I'm not dependent. I feel like this video is probably 25 minutes long, so I'm gonna cut it short here. I feel like this video is 25 minutes long. I hope you actually learned something from this. <sighs> Living alone as somebody with depression, plus you're single, plus you have no pets or friends, is a recipe for disaster because it takes so much work to just think positively. It really does. It's, it's like a chore sometimes getting up remembering, ugh, I have to be happy today. I have to be happy with the fact that there's no one next to me. I can't wake up to a warm body. Mm. It's very, very difficult to do, but you need to create the mindset that you're gonna be fine. It's okay. For a very long time, I wasn't even attracted to anybody else, but I had to remind myself and give it time that that person was not the only guy out there. So those are the things that I do to help myself, you know, when dealing with loneliness, which I do feel quite often actually. I work out, it instantly puts me in a better mood because I feel like I'm a part of something. I'll randomly just dance in my living room, I'll like practice my twice performances, and most importantly, I go on no social media weeks, meaning I will disable Instagram from my phone well, delete the app from my phone and I will unfollow everybody except for like two dogs. And I just leave it like that for a few months. I just, I know too much now. Being someone who does this full time, I know that a lot of the posts that people make are just fake. They're actually unhappy inside and they're just painting the idea that you need to have a perfect life, the perfect matcha tea, the perfect boyfriend, everything is all good and dandy. You know, it just reminds me of how in movies, there's always that emphasis on there being a romantic line. Like, why can't there be, I don't know, a storyline where two people don't, I don't know, does this make any sense? Maybe I'm just asexual. Maybe I'm just hungry. Am I hungry? Have I eaten yet? Okay, this video is getting too long. Goodbye. Find things to fill your day with that remind you that you're not lonely. Be very grateful for what you do have, even if your living situation sucks. Anybody can be your family. Even the lizards outside my door. Goodbye. Drink some water.